In this video, I'm going to show you from start to finish how to build this full AMD gaming system. I'm going to show you how to build it inside of the Lian Li Lancool 216 case. And for the motherboard, we're going to be utilizing the ASRock X670 Pro RS motherboard. And we're going to be utilizing the AMD R7 7700 processor along with an AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT video card. So let's get started. So we're starting off the build with the ASRock X670E Pro RS. We're going to be installing the Ryzen 7 7700 processor. We'll just go ahead and push this arm down and then out towards the RAM and then lift it over here. Now we'll pull the arm back and we'll go ahead and open up the socket. Now be careful to touch any of these pins. You don't want to damage it. They're incredibly difficult to bend back. Not impossible, just very difficult. And if you do bend it, chances are you're going to void your warranty. So there's two ways to install the CPU. First off, you'll notice on the top right hand corner, that little gold triangle, it's not on any other of the corners. And then right over here on the motherboard, there's a little triangle right over there as well. So that tells you to line up those two triangles and just drop it right in place. In case you don't see that triangle, you'll notice with the CPU like this, there's two little notches, one notch right over here and one notch right over here. You'll also notice that this piece down here is longer than this piece up here. So then with this piece of plastic here and the plastic here, those are for the notches. Then you'll notice over here and over here are longer than up here. So that's another way to tell. So we'll just go ahead and drop that right into place and you can just move it around a little bit just to make sure that it's in the socket correctly. And now we'll just drop the tray over. You'll notice this little lip over here is going to go over this lip right over here. So we'll drop that there and then we'll push this little lever down. We'll slide it out and back under here where it was before. While we do that, you'll notice this piece of plastic just flip right off. A little less dramatic than I thought it would be, but Regardless of that, save this in the motherboard box just in case you need to return the board or you want to sell the board or you want to do something with the board. You don't want to lose this because it will cover those pins for later. And now for the RAM, since we will be using two sticks of RAM, we will need to use slots A2 and B2. Just above the RAM, you can see this little legend up here that lets you know slot A2 and B2. So starting off with slot A2, we'll open up this piece here and then this little piece right over here that goes ahead and locks the memory in place. Then matching up this notch with these notches here, we'll just drop the RAM in place. And then you'll notice those two little pieces over here that hold the memory in place. They're just going to click right in place. And then B2, we'll go ahead and unlock those slots. And then again, we'll drop the memory right in place and it'll lock over here first and then right over here. That helps you know that you have the memory locked in place. Now, sometimes after you push the memory all the way in, these little pieces won't click back into place. It happens not very often, but it does. So if you're sure that you have the memory firmly seated and that's still kind of sticking out, maybe like that, just go ahead and push it back in by hand right in here, just to make sure that it's seated properly. So it doesn't look awkward. And now to install the M.2 SSD, we'll have to undo this screw here and this screw here on the heatsink the blazing M.2 heatsink. Then we'll remove them. And then we'll install the Solidime P44 Pro M.2 SSD. Now to do that, you'll notice there's a little notch right over here on the SSD. And that's going to go ahead and line up with the little notch right down here on the M.2 slot. And then we'll go ahead and just slide it in right in here. Make sure those gold fingers disappear, push it in, then drop it.
Now, if you're not going to use a heatsink, you can use the M.2 screw included in the motherboard box. But if you are going to return this heatsink back into place, first off, I recommend you remove this blue film and then hold down the M.2 SSD and line up those two screws into those screw holes. and just screw them into place. Make sure both are firmly screwed in. And now that we've installed the CPU, the RAM and the M.2 SSD, we'll go ahead and install the liquid cooling unit. We're going to be using the Fractal Design Lumen S36 liquid cooling unit. We're going to have this along the ceiling of the case, and then we're going to have the fans along the bottom sucking warm air through the case, through the radiator, exhausting it through the top of the case. And because the radiator is going to sit just like this, we're going to have the fans over here and the cables on this side of the radiator instead of over here visible. Okay. Now with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around. So then it's going to be installed just like this. Actually, I'll turn it around. That way we have the tops of the cables over here just to make it a little bit nicer. And then we'll go ahead and screw in these screws through the fans into the radiator. You'll notice there are little holes along here. You don't want to screw them in 100% just yet until you have all four of the screws in each fan threaded in. And now with that, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. And now to help keep everything out of sight, because the cables from the radiator are already up here, I'm gonna go ahead and route all the cables just like this, and then zip tie them all together. The case brings these zip ties, very handy. So the way this is going to work is this cable goes connected from the pump to a motherboard header. And then these three fans are going to connect this fan, connects into this fan, connects into this fan, or vice versa. This into this into this into a four pin PWM header on the motherboard as well. And then the same with the RGB. It's going to go connected from this fan to this fan to this fan, then to an ARGB header on the motherboard and then a cable goes connected into the pump over here into an RGB header on the motherboard. You can share that cable as well so that it all goes through one cable. So then coming from the rear fan, we'll connect the male into the female, the male into the female here, and then this into a fan header on the motherboard and then this into a pump header on the motherboard. Now, because the cable that comes from the pump to an ARGB header is female, which will go directly connected to the motherboard to make it easier, what I'll do, we'll connect, we'll leave this open and then we'll connect the female side to the male or the third fan to the second fan, ARGB. And then the second fan to the first fan male as well so that we can only connect this directly to the motherboard one instead of having two now let's go ahead and put the pump on the motherboard real quick we'll take this piece of plastic off first now this comes pre-applied with thermal paste i like to leave what they have on there first if i don't like it i can just come back in and apply my own thermal paste so I'm aligning the radiator up at top the way it's going to sit inside of the case just to make this a little bit easier and make a lot more sense. So first off, we're going to take off this piece that comes already attached, just slide it out. This is for Intel. Now this is going to be the mounting mechanism that we use for AMD. You'll notice 
the little C kind of thing here and it sticks out over here and there's a little screw hole here. So we're going to be aligning this screw comes right into here, sticking out just like that and then screwing this right into here. You don't have to screw it in all the way hard just so that it sticks right there. And we'll do the same over here. Now, before we put the pump in, we'll go ahead and insert this ARGB cable, this end into here. You'll notice when we get it going real close, you'll slide it in just like this. And you'll hear a little teeny tiny click when it's completely inserted. Okay, so then these little pieces here are going to come over these little edges here on the AMD retention mechanism. So this will lock right into here, went over that lip and it kind of locks it in place. We can take it off for now, but once we screw this in and both sides are clamped in, that's going to make that incredibly tight. Okay, and you can do it whichever way you'd like. I'm going to have it with the hoses facing the memory right over there. And now, like we removed the last piece, we're going to slide that right in through this groove right over here. Locks right in place. Just make sure you don't get this cable in the way. And then remember there's pre-applied thermal paste down here. You can use your own, but I like to use what it brings first and then just push it down. Try to join, put that little clamp over one side and then push it down and push that clamp over the other side. Very hard to demonstrate because it's such a tight spot. Let's see if I can show you here. Okay, clamped into space right over here and then screw it in, screw the other side in. Nice and tight, you don't wanna do brute force, just it has to make sense. And then we can go ahead and lead the wire right around here to hide it however we decide to do that. But we are going to connect this to the cables up on the radiator. So I'm gonna leave this like that for now. So now that we've installed the CPU, the RAM, the M.2, and the liquid cooling unit, we can go ahead and put everything into the case. Now there's just one precaution we need to have. Now it may be a little difficult to see right now, but it'll make sense in a second. We're using the ASRock X670E Pro RS motherboard. It's an ATX form factor. Now you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 screw holes. We need to make sure that the motherboard has those 10 screw holes and not an additional one, like maybe one right in here or one over here that will cause a short on the board. We need to make sure there's 10 standoffs in there so that we can connect all 10 screws. Now this screw here, while it is part of the ATX, it's not part of the standard form factor. So all cases may not have that screw. So just remember that. So let's check out the case real quick. This is actually the perfect example to show you. So we'll see on ATX right now, there are standoffs already set. There's one here, 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 and here. Those are nine standoffs. But if you remember the motherboard had 10, there should be an extra one right over here, but there isn't. Now that's not a bad thing. That's an extra, it doesn't need to be there. That portion of the board isn't going to sag down and touch the case. But if there was a standoff here and there was an actual standoff there and there wasn't that hole on the motherboard, that could cause it to short. So definitely you have to pay attention to that. So now we'll go ahead and grab the motherboard and the liquid cooling unit and drop that right in here. Now we'll situate it in one second. On the rear IO here, this is why I was saying we need to situate it. I was just laying it down, but now we need to just put everything right in place here. Now, once this is in place, 
Aligning that lets us know that the screw holes, if not perfect, they're in a better place. So now we can just by eye make sure that all the rest of the nine standoffs are in the correct hole location. Again, we can't use that 10th one. Now what I like to do is I screw in one about 50% of the way. Then I grab another one and I'll put it in the middle. So one in the corner, then one in the middle over here, 50% of the way as well. Then one at the opposite corner, 50%. Then I do the same over here. Then there's one here and then one over here. And then I fill out the middle ones just to make sure that we are properly seated. Then once I'm done there, we go ahead and fill in the rest. Okay, on the final one, we can screw that one in 100% and then screw the rest in Now bringing in the liquid cooling unit, the radiator, these cables are kind of short. I have extensions, but they don't come with the package, so I'm not going to use them. So we'll connect the pump to the CPU fan header, and it might be a little difficult because everything is so short, but it works. So make sure you connect it through pins one through three. A little bit hard to show you because of how tight it is, but if you have any questions, just let me know. And then we'll find that other one, the male for the fans, and we'll connect it to the CPU header number two over here, which is a four pin. So that is PWM. Okay, that's connected there. And then we'll connect the ARGB cable We'll bring it up through here so that it's a little bit hidden. And then we'll connect it to the male end on the opposite side of the fans. So that that way, we only have to use one ARGB header on the board, which is right over here. Unfortunately, everything's a little tight with this configuration. The cable's right over here. There's a three pin. So we'll connect that over here. And the fact that it's tight just means it's going to be so much nicer when it's done because everything will be hidden. And now we can just line the liquid cooling unit up here, the radiator, and then we'll situate all these cables. But because we went ahead and zip tied all those cables over here, it just looks a little bit nicer. So now we'll come on the other side. So coming over here, we'll just undo the screws up here and we'll remove the top. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and line up the screw holes here. So we want to make sure that we first line up one and we can see it clearly one here. And then we want to make sure that we can see the bottom one clearly as well. So I'm going to put in the first screw here as before. I'll do it 50% and then on the complete opposite side, making sure everything aligns. And now that we have this one and this one. Now we can start filling in the rest and we want to make sure as many screw holes line up as possible. So completely to the front, they all line up. Okay, with this one, we'll go ahead and tighten them all up now. Now with that in, we'll go ahead and put this back on there. 
Now there's two parts here that I did forget to do. First one is the eight pin and the four pin CPU power. Forgot to connect them. And we have the liquid cooling in the way, but there's actually something good about this. And then the other thing I forgot to put was the GPU sag bracket, which will go connected here and easy enough to show you in one sec. So now the cool thing about this case or the other cool thing I should say, and I didn't mean to do this, but it's great that I did, is I can come over here and undo these two screws Then I can just, maybe I should take off the top panel too. Then I can just lift this out of the way without having to remove the radiator out of the system. I just lift that out of the way and then both of these are exposed. That makes things so much easier for me. So now all I need to do is connect the 8 pin CPU power, CPU power, make sure it is EPS. So we'll connect that right over here and then just push that right in. Now, if you have the eight pin, the four pin is optional, but I like to connect both to provide additional power to the CPU if you want to overclock. If you don't overclock, then you don't need the second one, but I'm gonna put it in there just in case. So the four pin here is a four plus four, which will make an eight pin, which is just like that one. So there is a way to connect this. Both of these are different. Now, an easy way to tell which one of the two you'd be using is if you notice the bottom of these two pins, this bottom one over here looks like an upside down house. There's a flat part, but then at the bottom it's flat. And then there are two little edges that looks like an upside down roof. Kind of weird to explain, but with it flipped upside down, you can see what I mean right over here. It's not perfectly square. There is a little tiny curve. So, and it goes connected just like this. And it connects easy. You don't have to push incredibly hard. And then we can just push that excess cable. And actually we'll do that for both. Right through this hole here. And the eight pin as well. Right over here and then the excess the other four pin the one we're not using we can just push it through here and we'll zip tie that up in a second and now we can just put this back into place we don't need anything else in there such a great idea now mind you Lee and Lee is not the first to do this but any case that does it I think is awesome and just put the screws back in And then the top panel, so much easier than removing that entire radiator. Now, the other thing I did forget, the anti-sag bracket that comes included for this motherboard. Let me move these out of the way for now. I need to undo these two screws and actually I forgot the bottom one. Now the piece I was talking about for the anti-sag bracket, the reason you can't use it on other boards is this is going to make contact and this with the board. So that's metal right on here. If there's anything on the board that can't make contact with metal, you could end up frying your board. And the way that they've done it, you can clearly see that there are no traces or anything running through there. And then they include their own screws for that. So it's not the screw that I had in there. So it's a little bit longer. And that'll make up for the fact that I didn't screw in that other screw on the corner. And then I'm going to save it for when we have the card in place. But then when we know where the card is, we put this piece in here and then we screw that right in place, keeping the card up. So now that we have this together, the next piece would be the video card, but I'm not going to install that just yet. We need to install the power supply, then all the cables that comes from the power supply into the board and everything, and then the cables for the front panel header into the motherboard as well. Then we'll install the video card. So let's get on that real quick. All right, so coming along the back, we have USB Type-C, HD Audio, USB 3.0, and front panel. Front panel would be for the power button, reset button, and all those other buttons from the front panel, and 
HD activity power. So we're going to install the front panel. Let's see right up here where there's a grommet available. We'll slide that in there. HD audio is usually along the back of the board. So we'll go ahead and push that right through here. Remember we're on the back of the case so the back of the board is over here. Let's see where the rest is real quick. So USB Type-C is right over here. USB 3.0 is right over here. HD audio is right over here. And front panel is right over here. USB 3 and USB Type-C connect up here in the front as well, or slide through. Actually, yeah, we're going to actually slide those right in the top grommet, right up here. And then we can use their metal portion over here for cable management. And we'll need to play with it a little bit more in a minute, but I'll just slide it through and then through here as well. So then USB 3.0, we need to be very careful. The connection is very fragile, the little pins. So we'll make sure that this little notch right over here locks into this little notch right over here. And then we'll just push that right in. A really easy connection. Then USB type C right under it. Here is the connection. And then that goes right into this little slot right over here, that little connection. That also clicks really easily into place once you have it correctly, of course. And then we'll connect the HD audio, again, this cable right here into this connection right over here. And it's really hard to get in the angle correctly. Connected. And then we'll connect front panel, this cable right over here into the front panel header right over here. Easy enough. And again, that is going to control the power button, the reset button, the power LED, the HD activity, and all those up there. That is awesome that it's finally in one header. It may not be 100% standard, but seems to work for the most part. And now that we have all these cables connected, let's go ahead and connect the SATA connection for the SATA SSD. Is going to go connected right into one of these SATA ports. You'll connect this little L connector into the SATA connection and it's really easy. So I'll connect it to the first one. Actually, I'll slide it behind that little sag bracket. And then I'll slide the rest of the cable through the grommet. Since the SSD is on the back or will be, I totally forgot about it till right now. Okay, very hidden, especially because of that anti-sag bracket. Oh, we can put the two SSDs or one SSD right over here. Now for the SSD, we'll grab this tray. We'll attach the SSD just like this so that the cables are along the bottom here so that the SATA cable over here, again, the little L portion of the cable will connect to the L portion right over here. And we'll click into place. And then we'll just connect all four. I'll do one just to show you how it is. We'll screw in all four, just like that, here, here, and here, and we'll put it right back. Sit it right here. Easy enough. And then we need to connect a power over here. For that, we'll go ahead and grab the power supply. If you have a modular power supply, it makes things a lot easier. You can connect all the cables that you know you're going to use and maybe one or two extra 
just in case. And then for example, like for those, the eight pin and the four pin, we can connect those to the motherboard and then have them later on so that we can connect to the power supply, just making things, moving things around so much easier. I've already connected two SATA power connections right here. And then there's the ATX 24 pin that's always required. And then we're just going to go ahead and fit the power supply right down here. Just slide it in. And since there are these rubber pads for noise suppression, we need to make sure that we adjust the power supply so that it fits in nicely. going to be a little bit more difficult because we have those cables coming through and before we slide it in totally we have to remember the two CPU power connections we had at the top the four pin and the eight pin or four plus four at the very end over here they'll both be eight pins because they'll connect into cpu one and cpu two so and then you can connect it and to either which one of those two they're both the same and then also we'll go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we need to plug in the pcie connections for the video card so this particular power supply has six VGA or PCIe connections. So we'll go ahead and connect four of them. And those are just in cases so that we don't have to reconnect it later. And even though we don't have to do it in order, I like to do it in order. So I'll do one, two, three, four. Three. And four. So for this particular video card, we're only going to need two though. So I'll just grab one and two. And again, you can use one and four or one and three or three and two. I'm just using one and four. Actually, I'm going to use three and four because they're the most outer, at least from here. And what I'll do is just, I'll move it over to five and six, just to make it a little bit cleaner. And now we can slide it in. We just need to remember, take it easy because we have those two rubber pegs for anti-vibration. And then we have this cable that slides in, making the connection a little bit tighter. I'll make sure we don't knock that rubber peg out. Okay, and that rubber peg is still there, so we're good. Now we're going to use four of this type of screw for the power supply. And like before, we only screwed in about 50%. That way we make sure all four properly fit. And now on the last one, we'll go ahead, screw it in. You'll notice it pulls the power supply out. Okay, perfect. So now we'll go ahead and slide the ATX 24 pin, the thickest of the cables. I'm just sliding it so that it is the outermost cable. Perfect, so it doesn't get in the way of anything else. Now I'm going to slide it on the upper grommet right above that. So it's good there. I'm going to take one of the SATA power connections like before the outermost one, and I'm going to connect it so let's see, we have SATA powers, and that lets me show you over here how the SATA power connections can just fit right in here. Fits beautifully right in there for better cable management. Perfect, and then we'll zip tie this guy together over here, and then we'll come down that chain And then for the PWM and ARGB power connection, we'll just pull all these cables through. Okay, so these will go connected to the motherboard and then to a SATA power. To make the connection nicer, I'm going to connect the SATA power that I connect here. So 
So we have a SATA power going to the SSD right here. Then I'm going to connect this guy into this other SATA power connection, connecting the two L's. And then I'm going to drop it right over here for better cable management. And then slide this one out of sight, out of mind. And I'll take care of all of these when it's time to make it look nicer. These two I'll slide in underneath here so that we can have the motherboard control the ARGB and the PWM from the controller up above. Actually, I'll have to slide it over here since we're out of space over there. This is the extra SATA power, which we don't need, but I put it just in case. I'll go ahead and tuck back here and then we'll get the two PCIe cables and we'll drop them right in here for the video card. And those cables again came with the power supply. So then here we'll grab the ARGB and the PWM power. We'll connect the PWM power right over here to the PWM fan header. And the ARGB connection is just a little bit further away over here. And again, the ARGB three pin. Maybe I can fit it through there. Yep, I can, good. Okay, perfect. So I just connected the ARGB connection right over there. Now let's connect the video card. So installation of this card is going to be a little bit different than usual because we are using a riser card. I made a mistake on my last video that I tightened up in this video and I ended up breaking one of the standoffs. It's not the end of the world. I'll probably have to order another standoff and I can make do with what I have. So you see this standoff broke right over here. So unfortunately I can't show you over there. I'm gonna move it up two pegs. So instead of having two pegs over here for the GPU to sit on, it's only going to have one. Now to give you a better example of what I mean, in order to install it correctly, we'll grab the PCIe connection on the ribbon cable. We'll open up the PCIe slot. We'll push these gold fingers into the slot. And since we opened up that PCIe slot, that just popped up, it locked it in place. And now I ordered a really long one, so hopefully it's not bad. Okay. And so then we just screw this right here, right here. And so the card's going to be laying right over here. I think it'll be this slot and this, this slot. Then we'll go ahead and remove those two. I should have done that earlier. Actually, what I'll do is I'll take this out. So I am screwing in the PCIe slot or the, the ribbon cable into the riser. And what I can do temporarily is this comes with a liquid cooling unit and I can pop this in temporarily because it is the same size. This is just temporarily until I get another one. This is sticking out a little bit, but it should be okay. If not, I'll have a dead card, but then we'll take this off. And then I'll remove the first two, or I'm sorry, the second and the third. And that should fit in properly. And now I can go ahead and slide the card right in here. Let me bring you in so you can see it a little bit better. Now you'll see those PCIe gold fingers disappear right into that PCIe slot. 
and I'll just push it down. And the card seems perfectly inserted. Now I'm going to use these thumb screws to screw the card in place. They also come with the case. Perfect. And now we'll connect these two PCIe cables. So these are two eight pins. So this is a six plus two. We'll just make it an eight pin. And then connect that. right in there and then hide those cables and then we'll do the same with this six plus two cable and now we just need to connect the ATX 24 pin over here kind of forgot about that one in the excitement of the video card now everything is connected as it is ugly or not everything will work perfectly with the vertically mounted video card and all of the cables extra ones included is going to work properly now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a few minutes and i'm going to time lapse it just making everything look nice and pretty so give me a sec All right, so while it can look nicer, I would say it looks pretty nice, especially with that vertically mounted video card. See that right there, looks nice. Then coming around the back and the side, still looks beautiful. Coming around the back over here, I forgot to clip some of these zip ties, one quick sec. So it looks incredibly clean coming from the top. Now, I didn't realize it, but the fans and everything were already connected to this. So that just made my cabling a little bit easier Then coming down here. I kept up with all the wiring through these metal pieces here. Kind of skipped this one for the EPS power. Came down here with the SATA power. And then over here with the ATX and the USB Type-C and the USB 3.0. Then coming down here to the bottom, everything is relatively nice and clean. Typically, I don't 
have this too clean and it doesn't look bad if you don't stare incredibly hard. If you stare incredibly hard, you can see I kind of shoved in things here. These two extra PCIe 8 pins, I rolled up nicely into the top 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive bays up here. In case I need them, they're easy to get to. I routed the PCIe 8 pins through the rubber grommet down here instead of going through the top, which made it look nicer because then I didn't have a bunch of cables coming over here into here. I brought it from the bottom. You can see them down here over through the back up here. I didn't end up using the sag bracket because the card is vertical. It's not going to sag there. I do need to talk with Lee and Lee about getting another one of those standoffs. So I did a pretty good job using the fractal designs little piece there and then the extra standoff or case fan screw and it works it's the perfect height it just doesn't look perfect but you know what i'll take it as it is over here we ended up using two thumb screws for the video card and then again since it is vertical you can see that right over here and that is pretty nice the great part is be it a 490 or an rx 7900 xt we have plenty of room up here. Then the other great part is we have plenty of cooling up at the front with two 140 millimeter fans, and that's gonna blow in nice airflow over here, cooling the card. And then if we wanted to use their own cooling piece right over here, the external piece, we could, but we'd need a 120 millimeter fan, which we don't have. So now what I'm going to do so I think that went pretty well. The entire build was quick and was very easy. Unfortunately, we had a few issues with the riser card, that little metal riser piece for the bracket. That broke when I was trying to screw it in. It felt very flimsy, but it could have been just that one. Unfortunately, as a reviewer, I can't get a replacement, but you as a customer should be able to. Aside from the build going smoothly, the cabling also went incredibly smooth. As you can see here, everything looks beautiful. It didn't take a whole lot of extra work to make it look that way either. And then along the back, and usually this doesn't happen. It looks beautiful. You don't have a rat's nest around everywhere. Mind you, it's not incredibly tidy right here, but it's not incredibly horrible either. I think it looks great as it is. The fact that you can take off the top of the case helped a lot. That way it saved me a lot of time when I forgot to plug in those two EPS CPU power connections. Just take off the top, do what you need to do, and you can put it back on, and that saves you a lot of time. And then the little metal pieces right over here for cable routing helped a lot as well. And usually they don't, they have them in there, but this one actually went very well and everything fit in perfectly. I love the fact, and I didn't show it in this part of the video, I showed it in the unboxing, that you can move this, these buttons from here to the very top or they came at the very top and I brought them down here. I think that's awesome. It makes it a lot easier. Again, for me, I have my case on top of the desk. So instead of having to reach at the top and guess where I'm hitting, is it, where is it? I can just, you know, mind you, I'll be on the other side, but it's a lot easier that way. I think it's great that it brings 160 millimeter fans up at the very front instead of 120s or 140s. I know I said 140s in the video. I was incorrect on that. I had one of my viewers let me know that I was wrong on that. So thank you on that. The fact that you can actually move the motherboard up or down might be kind of cool. I didn't actually utilize it. I'm not 100% sure how that would work over here for the rear IO, but I kind of see it. So normally on the bottom of the IO or all around the IO, you would see the silver piece sticking out, letting you know that it's fully inserted. But on this one, instead of that piece sticking out or a portion letting you know that the edge is sticking out, it's actually flush down here so that if you were to raise it, I think you would see more of that IO. And then some of the one up here would disappear under here. This piece right here is a little sticking out a little bit. So I feel like I can actually raise that a little bit more and you would have plenty of space so that is a lot of forward thinking on Lee and Lee's part they have all the grommets and all the holes in the perfect spot at least from what I see so far I don't really have any complaints about this case it's near perfect yeah, well you know what my complaint would be the way that they handled this mounting mechanism it was very difficult to work with the screws here I had to 
make my screwdriver shorter. Now mind you, my screwdriver is to begin with, but it was incredibly difficult even with the shorter screwdriver because of the little ledge right over here. And then again, with how cheap that screw was down there that it broke off, but I love the fact that up here they have this controller so that you can plug in other fans and other RGB things. I think that's great. I didn't use it in this particular build, but it's there for you guys to utilize in case you want to. And then the fact that you can a full 360 millimeter radiator at the top, I think that's pretty awesome. So let me know what you think about the case and the overall build. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What part did you hate about it? And what part did you love about it? I think the case is awesome. I think the build went very well. I think the price is amazing and there is little to nothing I don't like about this case. I'd love to get your feedback on it. But aside from that, if you like this build video and you want to see the parts that are missing that I did in the unboxing, check out this video up above. And thanks for stopping by. Iggy with this bites for you up. See you guys.